sometimes the dreams that we have are much too grand to accomplish on our own. If we really want to see our vision succeed, then we must find others to share the dream. We may need to include people who possess different skills and resources than we have. Teamwork is the ability to work together towards a common vision, and it enables ordinary people to achieve extraordinary success by working as a team. Hi, my name is Lauren Grace from the Rainforest Art Project, and this is the story of an unlikely team who came together from two continents to create the Statue of Liberty. One of the greatest artistic and engineering accomplishments in history sits majestically on a small island in the middle of New York Harbor. The Statue of Liberty began as an idea in the mind of a French lawyer and historian named Édouard de Laboulaye. In 1865, when the American Civil War ended after four bloody years, Laboulaye was so inspired by Abraham Lincoln and the end of slavery that he wanted to build a great statue to celebrate liberty and freedom. He invited people for dinner parties at his home in Paris to share this vision. Among his guests was a sculptor named Frederick Auguste Bartoli, who was so impressed with this idea that he volunteered to design and build this magnificent statue. They began planning their strategy, knowing they would have to include many more people on their team if they wanted to see their dream become a reality. Bartoldi went to America in 1871 to look for a location for the giant monument and to find support among the American people. Bedlow Island would be the perfect location where the sculpture would be seen by millions of people every year, but it belonged to the US government. He was able to meet with President Ulysses S. Grant, who loved the idea and promised his help. Hmm, a good man to have on your team. After five months in the US, Bartholdi returned to France and began to design the Great Statue. The theme was liberty, and for their inspiration, they looked back 2,000 years to the ancient Roman goddess of freedom, Libertas. The team came up with a gigantic statue that would stand more than 150 feet tall and would have a staircase with 354 steps where visitors could climb to the top and look out at New York City from the balcony in the torch that she would be holding in her right hand. This torch symbolized the way to a better future and would welcome millions of people to the United States. In her left hand, she would hold a tablet with the inscription July 4th, 1776, honoring American independence. At the statue's feet would lay a broken chain and the right foot is raised as if to be walking towards freedom. On the head, there would be a crown with seven rays representing the seven continents. And within the crown, there would be a platform where up to 30 people would have a breathtaking view of New York Harbor. Laboulaye and the others were thrilled with Bartholdi's bold designs for the statue and now they needed to move on to the difficult job of finding the money to begin construction. They formed a committee to raise the money and within six months they had one quarter of the required funding. Bartholdi returned to the United States where he received more donations and also heard the good news that Congress had given them permission to build the monument on Bedloe's Island. Originally, Laboulaye and Bartholdi had imagined that the statue would be made of marble, but because of its cost and the massive height of the structure, they decided to make it from copper using a process called repoussé. This is an ancient form of art going back over 4,000 years where a wooden form is created and the metal is pounded into the shape using different wooden hammers. Over 300 different types of hammers would be used making the statue. The copper was formed from large flat sheets that are 2.5 millimeters thick or about the same thickness of two stacked pennies. The process required that the entire statue first be made of wood with a layer of plaster so that they could sculpt the details. With this complete, the reverse wooden forms were created, which were used for the hammering repoussé process. 
The team was making great progress, but they still had several giant obstacles to overcome. Because there had never been anything of this size done before, they would need an engineer to help them design the steel framework inside to support the thin copper skin. They turned to the brilliant bridge builder, Gustav Eiffel, who designed the steel skeleton to which all of the shaped copper plates would be attached. This same use of triangulated steel framework would be employed by Eiffel several years later when he created the magnificent Eiffel Tower in Paris. As progress moved forward on the sculpture, they would be depending on their teammates in the United States to create the giant base for the statue. In fact, they had discovered that this would be even more expensive than the actual sculpture. Richard Hunt joined the team as the American designer of the enormous base for the statue, but the efforts to raise the funds by asking for donations from wealthy Americans was going very poorly. It was at this time that another famous man joined the team. Hearing of the funding problems, Joseph Pulitzer, the owner of the New York World newspaper, donated $1,000 and called on every American citizen to help him raise the money. He promised to publish the names of every person who donated in his newspaper, even if it was only a penny. And the money soon began flooding in. Americans wanted to be part of the team, and over 80% of the cost of building the enormous base came from donations of under $1. On June 17, 1885, the French ship Isère arrived in New York Harbor, carrying all the pieces to the statue. In October of 1886, 21 years after Laboulaye and Bartoli had originated the idea, the monument was completed and over a million people joined in a parade through New York City to celebrate this great accomplishment. Originally, the statue was shiny like a new penny, but after about 15 years in the weather, it acquired its beautiful green patina. Today, the Statue of Liberty is the cherished symbol of freedom for people around the world and stands as one of the greatest artistic and engineering accomplishments of all time. Amazingly, it was not a gift from the French government, as many people think. This magnificent creation stands as a powerful monument to the thousands of ordinary people who came together through teamwork to overcome unbelievable obstacles to achieve extraordinary success. This is Lauren Gray signing off with the Rainforest Art Project, changing the world one piece of art at a time.